let's go ahead and map that point that I had collected out in the field at that tree. Fire up a web browser and go to explorer.arcgis.com. ArcGIS Explorer Online is where we're going. ArcGIS Explorer Online is a wonderful collection of tools. It runs in a web browser as the online name implies, but you have a whole array of tools at your fingertips here that allow you to do some very powerful things in education and beyond. I'm going to click on New Map. I've got a nice base map already. And in the search window in the upper right, I'm going to go ahead and type in my GPS coordinate, the one I collected out in the field, 39.92022 north, and then a minus 105.11643. That's west longitude. That's why I'm inserting the minus sign in front of it. Again, think of the Cartesian coordinate system, with the x-axis being the equator and the y-axis being the prime meridian. North America, or at least the bulk of it, is in the north and west quadrant of that Cartesian coordinate system. And therefore, the x-coordinate, or the longitude, is in the negatives. The y-coordinate is positive because we're in the northern hemisphere. OK, I see a base map there. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in by shift and dragging the mouse. Wow, not only do I see streets here, but I'm seeing some rich content. I've got some contour lines. I've got some building footprints here. I've even got some trees that have been digitized and put in here. Where did all this content come from? This content comes from industry, government agencies, higher education, and nonprofit organizations, all contributing to what we call a community base map. Depending on your community, this may or may not be as well populated as it is right here but it's becoming ever more so with the passing of each day. Again, I'm going to shift, click, and drag. Now, I'm really happy with this content, not only with the base map, but with my added point, because this point is right where I was on the ground, according to this base map. I was at nearly the far western tree in this grove, and I can see that my point that I've entered from my GPS is right where it's supposed to be. It's not in the na neighboring field or in the adjacent city. It's exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, again, think of accuracy and precision. This particular GPS unit that I was using is only a recreational grade unit. But even so, I'm quite happy with its accuracy, XY, horizontal accuracy. OK, I'm also happy with, with the content of the base image. But I want to change the base image right now. I'm going to change the base map. I want a satellite image or an aerial photo. I'm going to go ahead and pick the Bing Maps aerial. Ah, now I see the building. I see the field where I was collecting these trees. And I've lost my point, so I'm going to go ahead and add it again. We'll see how to make it permanent in a moment. Now let's go ahead and zoom in. OK, excellent. Now. What's the next step? As you saw, when you just have these points entered as search results, they're not permanent. And so to make them more permanent and not floating away, I'm going to go ahead and click on this plus sign. I'm going to add it to Map Notes. Map Notes are a layer, just like any other layer. A base map layer could be a streets, a satellite image, topo maps, soils, biomes, whatever. But now I've got it. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead here and click on Show Map Contents. Now I can see my map notes. OK, now I've got a pop-up here. Great. Let's go ahead and edit and change the symbol, first of all. I've got a whole wide variety of things here that I can pick from. I'm going to pick a push pin. And I'm also going to adjust the symbol size. Great. Now I've got a bigger symbol. I've got that push pin there. Let's go ahead and click on that again. And this time, let's edit the pop-up. I want my title to be something a bit more descriptive. So I think I'm going to put the latitude and longitude coordinates down in the description and call my title tree number one at the S3 Broomfield office. 
put some notes here. This is the first tree I collected. Okay. I also have the option of putting an image URL. You know, I did take a photograph there and I put it up on the internet. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste that URL in the field. And then when I click on the photo, I want it to pop up a web page. Since I was at the ESRI office, I think I'll have it pop up to the ESRI website. Great. Now I've got a title, I've got a description, I've got an image that will appear, and I've got a related link. I'm going to go ahead and say OK now. Now I've got that picture at that point. Let's click on that point. Up pops the picture. Great! That's what it looks like on the ground where I stood and collected that tree, latitude and longitude, and also some attributes of that tree. If I click on this picture, it should pop up the S3 web page, and it does, because that's what I had for my related URL. Super! So now I have a point with some associated data, as well as a picture. Hmm, great, but what if I wanted you to look at it, or anybody else? Well, I haven't saved this yet, so that's the next step. Let's go ahead and save this. How do I do that? Okay, well, let's go back here and look at the featured maps. What I want is for a person to be able to click on my map when they search on it, just like you could with the Brisbane floods or the soil survey or any other map in there. So back on my map, I want to save this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Save button. By the way, do your students know what this floppy disk even is? It's kind of interesting, isn't it, that a Save button is a floppy disk still. But there it is. Let's go ahead and save. Ah, now to save something, I need to sign in with my ESRI Global account, which you could easily set up for yourself if you don't already have one. I'm going to sign in. And now I can save. Now. Pause for a moment and let's talk about the value of metadata with anything that you save. Let's say you save something on your own local computer. If you don't know what you named it later on and you don't know where you stored it, it's awfully hard to find that file again, isn't it? So same thing when, you save, when you're saving things up to the cloud, in this case, for example, or with uh, Flickr files or anything you put on Facebook or in any other place you put on the web. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to call it the Esri Broomfield Field study trees using ArcGIS Explorer online. Okay? That's great. These are good for my tags as well. These are the things I can search on. And they're also good for my summary. I might say created 19 May 2011, which is today's date. Great. The thumbnail, I'm good with that at the moment. I can change it later if I want to. Okay, I'm going to save that. Now that I've saved it, how do I test it to know? Well, I'm going to go out to ArcGIS Online, just ArcGIS.com. One of the tabs inside ArcGIS Online is something called My Content. If I go to My Content, that's just what the name implies, I can see My Content. I'm going to scroll down until I see my Esri Broomfield Field Study. Okay, there it is. It also says not shared. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that. Once I click on it, I get some metadata that I put in earlier. The thing I want to do right now is to share it. I can share it with a group of colleagues. I can share it with a class. I can share it with people around the world that are interested in the same kind of content, maybe a group that I've joined or that I've created. Or I can share it with everyone. I think I'll share it with everyone. Now everyone will be able to find this. Let's go ahead and test that out. Let's fire up a new web browser window and go to ArcGIS.com. Broomfield Field Study. Ah, Esri Broomfield Field Study Trees. It's going to fire up. Ah, there's my map. And I can click on that pin. And there is my tree that I've collected, the point that I collected it at. So what we've done here is we've quickly mapped our GPS coordinate 
along with some data that we've collected at that point. And inside that data uh, description, I could have put the tree height, the tree species, all that sort of thing. I had some aspens out there, I had some locust trees, I had some spruce and pines. I could put all that kind of data in at each point. Then what we did is we hyperlinked a photograph and a URL of a web page to that point. And then this last piece was we've saved it. We've saved it and then we've shared it with the community, in this case everyone in the world that would go and look on ArcGIS.com or ArcGIS Online for that study that I just created. So you could do the same thing. And as you can see, this is quite easy to do and uh, I invite you to try it.